Hi everyone, um, my name is Rina Esmail and I'm the person who wrote Dutarana, which is the piece that um, you're going to be singing this semester and year. Um, so this is the first time I'm kind of doing something where I uh, do a video portion to help with the learning of the piece and so I just want to thank you for coming along with me on this journey um, and for agreeing to learn this piece. I'm sure you're looking at it and seeing a lot of changing time signatures and a lot of syllables that you don't aren't familiar with and I hope it's not too scary but I hope this video makes it a little less scary. Um, so this piece comes from a tradition called Hindustani music which is North Indian classical music. Um, and so one of the real differences in between Hindustani music and Western music is that when Hindustani musicians learn, they don't learn by reading something off a page. They learn by going back and forth with their teacher. Um, and the teacher will say one phrase and they'll repeat it and that's how they learn. So as you can imagine, the music is different because it supports that. And so what I wanted to do here is give you a little bit of an experience of that, about how an Indian musician would go about learning a piece like this, even though an Indian musician wouldn't necessarily be able to sing in so many parts of harmony like you guys are. So I'm hoping to kind of get the best of both worlds here. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about the meaning of the piece. The word tutarana is a combination of the Italian word tutti and the Hindustani word tarana. So tutti means uh, all or together or, you know, in a score, the, the reference would be, you know, singing together or playing together with everyone. And on the other hand, a tarana is a piece that's actually a solo piece. Most Indian singing is a solo art um, with accompaniment, but usually there's one main soloist. And so the tarana is probably closest to what a scat would be in jazz. So um, it's made up of these syllables that are, they don't really mean, they're not like words with meanings. What they are are the sounds that the tabla would make as it was playing. And the tabla is an Indian drum. So instead of counting, you know, one, two, three, four, etc., they would say something like da din din da da din din da da din din da da din din da. So you hear every beat has a kind of a sound to it, a kind of syllable that's associated with it, with a certain weight and a certain um, kind of just just a certain timbre to it. So um, th those syllables are then made into this this piece called tarana, which is very fast, um, which is really very lively, and typically it comes at the end of a Hindustani performance. So the singer will start really slow and keep going faster and faster, and finally, you know, they get to this point where maybe an hour into the performance, they're almost done and they're going extremely fast and they're just showing off their skill and that's the portion that's the tarana. So um, it's one of my favorite parts of Hindustani music and I just wanted to be able to share it with um, a Western audience through you. So, um, okay, we'll get into the specifics now. Okay, so I wanted to go over a little bit of just the pronunciation. So you'll notice if you say consonants in English like T and D and various other things, especially T and D because that's what we're going to be, you'll see a lot of that in this piece. You'll see, so if you say T, you notice that your um, tongue is kind of hitting in the middle of between your teeth and way back. It's kind of just right there on that little... Uh, Part that comes, I'm not a singer, so I, I don't know exactly what it is, or at least I'm not a Western singer. Um, so it kind of hits in the middle, T, T. But if you bring it forward, so it's right against the back of your teeth, it'll sound like T, T, right? So you're using, you're bringing your tongue really far forward, T and D, instead of T and D, okay? So um, it's a little, it's close to Spanish and it's actually called a dental consonant and uh, we don't have them quite the same way in English. But bring everything very far forward. I notice um, when I'm practicing Hindustani music, the very tip of my tongue will sometimes get a little bit sore if I'm practicing a lot because we don't use it the same way in English. So, the, the. <laughs> okay. Um, also, there's, there's some ends in it, n, n, a little bit further forward. Um, and in general, keep everything much further forward. Okay, um, the other thing is that, so there, there are a couple, there's dental and then there's another kind of consonant, but I specifically didn't put it in this piece because I didn't want to create more confusion than uh, I'm sure you already may already have. Um, so the other thing is um, 
in Hindi, there are two different kinds of consonants. So there's an aspirated consonant and an unaspirated consonant. So now, say for instance, you're saying the letter P, right? If you, if you just put your hand in front of your mouth and go P, you'll feel a little bit of air, right? But what you wanna do is for an unaspirated consonant, you put your hand in front of there and you say P in such a way that there's no air that comes out. And it'll sound like P, 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 instead of P. So do that and feel the difference of it. All right, and now what I want you to do is completely put a, push a lot of air through it. P, P, P. That's an aspirated consonant. So again, in English, we're kind of in the middle. We have partially aspirated consonants, but here it's either one or the other. So what you are going to notice in the piece is that I have some uh, consonants that are unaspirated and some that are aspirated. The ones that are aspirated are going to have an H after it, specifically the consonant dha, dha, or ga, ga, right? So da or d schwa would be the, and dha would be dha, dha. You hear that little puff of air that comes out, right? And then G A or G schwa would be g, and G H A would be ga ga. You so I just want you to hear the difference. It's a little bit tough to figure out how to do it at first, but practice it a lot and you'll get good at it. Um, so those are kind of the basics of Hindi pronunciation that you would need to know to perform this piece properly. I wanted to say, which was that. Um, if you don't have the right pronunciation, it's gonna be pretty difficult to um, perform the piece because like if, and we'll get into these later, but the phrase comes a lot. So we'll break it down, etc. later. But if you try to say it with an English accent, it's not, it doesn't pop the same way as So just uh, bear that in mind. Okay, so now I want to go through a couple of phrases in order. There are going to be 11 of them total, and hopefully those will span all of the things that you need to know to sing this piece. Um, you'll see that there are these little phrases that are repeated in many ways, maybe not um, uh, note-wise, but rhythm-wise. Um, so the first phrase you'll find is um, uh, at measure one, and uh, it's the phrase that's, that's going to be dim tanana nom tanana. Um, even if it's not in your part, you can still practice. So, um, dim, say after me, dim, ta, ta, na, 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 na. Okay, and we'll just do it with the metronome. Dim, ta, na, na, dim. Ta, na, na, dim ta, na na, dim ta, na na, dim ta na na, dim ta na na. All right. So all of them are going to work like this. And in real life, you'll see it's in 5-4. So, sorry, 5-8. Dim, ta, na, na. Nom, ta, na, na. Right. Next one, you're going to find um, in measure 18, soprano 2. So this is just a shorter version of that. Dim, ta, dim, ta, dim, ta, dim, ta, dim. And you can just do that with me one more time. Dim, ta, dim, ta, dim, ta, dim. Ta dim. And last time, dim, ta dim, ta dim, ta dim, ta dim. All right? Okay, so um, here's number three. You're going to find it measure 28 in the altos. Um, and I think it's mostly only in the altos. Um, but it's it quickly goes ta, ta, kita, dhum, ta, kita, nom, ta, kita. Okay? So, Da aspirated, and then the ki the unaspirated, dhum again aspirated, the ki the unaspirated, and then nom, and then the ki the again, and o on nom is like an just a straight vowel, not nom or something. It's nom. So, um, 
So let's just, actually we can't, actually we'll, we'll do it in four so that we can use the metronome. So, da, da, ki, da, boom, da, ki, da, nom, da, ki, da. Again, da, da, ki, da, dhum, da, ki, da, nom, da, ki, da. Okay. Um, and then you'll see when it comes a little later and it's a little faster, instead of saying dha ta ki ta dhum ta ki ta nom ta ki ta it's dha ta ki ta dhum ma ki ta nom ma ki ta so again dha ta ki ta dhum ma ki ta nom ma ki ta um so let's just try that version dha ta ki ta dhum ma ki ta nom ma ki ta one more time. Dha ta ki ta. Dhu ma ki ta. No ma ki ta. All right. So um, I'm going to try to uh, put links to each one of these in the comment section below so that, or I guess in the description section below so that you can go right to them if you need practice. Um, all right. Number four, um, this is just a really simple one. We won't spend too much time on it. Measure 16 soprano twos and for a number of the rest of you in different places. So this is just um, ta na 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 na. Okay, so we'll just do this a few times. Ta na 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 na. 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 All right. Um, the next one is measure seventeen soprano twos, and that is going to be de de na na. So again, d and uh, r de de na na. Um, the r is a little bit flipped. It's not re. It's re re. So um, I, I think that's probably called a flipped R. Um, so let's break that down slowly. De, re, na, na. Again, de, re, na, na. De de na na, de de na na, de de na na, de de na na. All right, so that's that one. Okay, number three. Um, you're gonna find this around measure twenty-eight alto part. Um, so if you're not an alto, um, I, actually I think it comes later in other parts. So maybe you should all do it. So this next one is uh, three syllables. The key. Da. So da, da with an aspiration, ki, and then da. And make sure again your T is far forward, even your D is far forward. So together it sounds dakita, 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 dakita. So let's just try breaking it down. Okay. Da, ki, da, da, ki. Da, da ki ta, da ki ta, da ki ta, da ki ta. 
Okay, so, so far um, I've been doing the ones that you'll find that are in eighth notes or quarter notes. There are also a lot of rhythms that are in the sixteenth notes and are quite fast. So, whereas the other ones um, will just require you getting the pronunciation right, these feel a little bit like tongue twisters if you don't know the language. And so, and even if you do know the language, I mean, they're really part of the dexterity and agility part of a tarana. So, um, these are ones you're really going to have to practice and get in your tongue, basically. So, um, the first one, which you'll see all over the place, it's tirakita ghatigana. Um, so if you want an example, measure to tirakita ghatigana. Um, so I'm going to go through this with you faster and faster a few times so that you get it. Okay. So, okay. Ti. The. Ki, the, ga, vi, ga, na, tira, ki, ta, ga, di, ga, na. Again, tira, ki, ta. G D G N T R K I T A G D G N T R K I T A G D G N T R K I T A G D G N Tira kita ghadi gana. Okay, now we're going to try it a little bit faster. So, Tira kita. Tira kita. Tira kita. Tira kita. Ghadi gana. Ghadigana, 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 Tira Kita Ghadigana, Tira Kita Ghadigana, Tira Kita Ghadigana, Tira Kita Ghadigana. Okay, and now I'm going to turn up the metronome a little bit. So, here we go. Ready, go. Tira kita, tira kita, tira kita, tira kita. Gadi gana, gadi gana, gadi gana, gadi gana. Tira kita, gadi gana. Tira kita, gadi gana. Tira kita, gadi gana. Tira kita, gadi gana. Okay, and now even a little bit faster. Let's see. Tira kita, tira kita, tira kita, tira kita. Ghadi gana, ghadi gana, ghadi gana, ghadi gana. Tira kita ghadi gana. Tira kita ghadi gana. Tira kita ghadi gana. Tira kita ghadi gana. Okay. So I spent a lot of time on that one because I want to make sure that you guys have that in, in your uh, mouth and tongue. Um, so there are uh, some other variations on this, which we'll go over slowly. Um, number eight. Okay, so this one adds tumakita in the middle. So here we have, let's maybe leave it a little bit faster. Okay, so repeat after me. Uh, and sorry, this will be uh, measure around measure fifteen is where you'll see it first. Okay. Tumakita, 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 tumakita. Tira kita tumakita ghadi gana. 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 
Okay, so that's one. Um, this one, this next one, which I can't do it with a metronome because it's an odd one. Um, so this will just be in the soprano ones, and I'll just say it to you quickly because you guys only have it for a little bit. Um, it's not even soprano one, sorry. It's descant measure 53. So this will just be tira kita taka, tira kita taka, tira kita taka, tira kita taka. Do it once with me. Tira kita taka, tira kita taka, tira kita taka, tira kita taka. Okay. Okay, we'll move on. Um, the last one um, of these kind of in this family is, uh, you'll see kind of at the end, measure 119 alto is the first time it comes, and it's a, it's quite a long phrase. So, dha kita dhuma kita tira kita ghadighana. Okay? So, let's, and remember dha kita is, aspir dha is aspirated, dhum is aspirated, and then, Tira kita kadiana is the same as it was before. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is a little fast. Okay, so here we go. Dha kita, dha kita, dha kita, dha kita, dhuma kita, dhuma kita, dhuma kita, dhuma kita, dha kita, dhuma kita. Dha kita dhuma kita. Dha kita dhuma kita. Dha kita dhuma kita. Dha kita dhuma kita tira kita ghadi ghana. 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 Okay, I realize that probably feels like a tongue twister and it will go a little bit faster, but um, go ahead and just practice that quite a bit. Um, Okay, last one, which I also can't do with the metronome. Um, you'll see it all over the place. Uh, starts at measure 10 on soprano twos, and um, it's the phrase dha gadi gana dha gadi gana dha. Let me do that again. Dha gadi gana dha gadi gana dha. Okay, so uh, the, uh, you know these syllables, but um, there dha is aspirated, and then gadi gana is the same as the one from tira kita gadi gana. All right, so those are kind of the basic patterns that you'll need to know um, as you're traversing this piece. So I hope you'll go over this video and go to the specific places where you're having issues with um, with uh, any of the rhythms. Um, and of course, uh, please contact me if you have questions about the piece. Um, this was a, a new experience for me writing a really fast piece in this style. And I know you're a wonderful choir. I'm really looking forward to working with you and I would love your feedback at any point. Or if you just want to email me and say hi, you, you can feel free to do that too. Okay, take care.